Okay, guys, coming to my finalization on uh, the Dart 165s for the Red-Headed Stepchild Project. Anytime I go through a set of heads, something like this, I make all, all measurements the same, blah, blah, blah. Boring as can be, right? Well, I decided to do a uh, break down each part of the ports on the head and the intake manifold and find out how efficient they are at different sections. Now, I've got my dimensions blocked off so you can't see them because that will make it just a little too easy for everyone to copy those ports and they have way too much work in them to just give that info away. Sorry. What I did is I took our, our intake port and I broke it up. A is our very opening, which is a hair bigger than a 1204. B is our pinch. C is our midsection. D is our, the apex of our short side radius. And E is right at the throat. Okay. So then I did my areas. And we got all of our CFMs of what they could flow at a 28%. 28, 28 inches uh, of water on the flow batch, right? That's the 146. You take the area times 146, it should give you about what it flows. Okay, so we, we go over the efficiency of each section, right? Our very opening, 77.9, 80% efficiency. Not bad, it's straight open, you know. Now, I took 277, uh, 270 CFM, because that's about what these flow. Uh, unfortunately, I did do a little more work to them. I don't know what they flow at this very moment. So, these may not be 100% correct. They should be very close. Okay, at the pinch, now last time we calculated the pinch, it actually flowed more than it calculated for. See, this has been actually brought up to the size of the 1204 as far as height. So now it's bigger, but it haven't, hasn't reflowed it. So it, it's a little bit less. It's 97.4%. By far the most efficient part of, of that port is the pinch, which is shaped very much like a Venturi. It should be efficient. Okay, let's move down to D. Wait a minute, sorry. I skipped C. C is right in the middle of the port, okay, where it starts to expand out. So we have more area. It should flow 295, but still we're stuck at 270. So our efficiency goes down. Makes sense. Now, right at our throat, it's much bigger, right? Should I tell you how big the throat is? I don't know. Here we are. That's what we are, right? 2.39 square inches. 77.3%, right? Valve job is super important, guys. Now, did I mess with the valve job on this? It's still pretty much, except for a little work above and below, it's the way Dart delivered it. And it is a nice valve job. Let's take a quick look at that, and you guys can see. Okay, you can see the way Dart did it. It's pretty nice. Could I improve that? I probably could. I mean, in reality, when I get the valves that this project is supposed to get, I may adjust that uh, seat width a little bit to make it even better. But I don't have that, so I'm not touching it right now. Uh, I did do work on the 194 Chevy valve. Now, this hasn't been tested yet, but I did just like I did on the uh, Mission Impossible 318. I put a little texture on it, and I want to do my dicom test and see what it looks like. Uh, I don't have to worry about stress risers and stuff on this. This is a test valve. It's never going to do nothing. I took the inch of carbon and stuff off the back, and I did put a little bit of an edge on this corner, which is a DV trick. We're going to see if it makes a difference or not. In any case... I mean, I had a conversation with DV about it, and he goes, well, at the very least, it lightens the valve if it doesn't improve flow, which I thought was interesting. The main idea of that was to cut anti-reversion. Now, 
I do have the flows reverse flows on this port before I did that mod, so I guess we could compare that with and without. That would be interesting. Okay, same idea on the GM15 valve. The only thing I did about this is I put a little bit of a radius on the edge. So I took off the lumps and bumps and carbon and all the crap that's been on there. Now, remember, <laughs> with a pipe, these exo tiny exhaust ports flow like 215 on a 1.5, which is no joke with a really tight throat. I am still battling in my little head whether I should open that throat up anymore. It is a street ride. So... Is it really worth it? I mean, as it is, the exhaust port flows really well. You guys can give me your opinion on whether we should open up that throat on that. It may, it may not gain any flow at all. In fact, it may lose some efficiency in the mid-range. Something to think about before you go through it. Of course, it's all null and void until we get the actual valves that are going to fit this anyway. So... It's kind of like a waste of effort, but I don't have any other jobs in the hopper at the moment, so I might as well waste a huge amount of time on this, because I can. And wifey isn't here to yell at me anyway, so it's perfect. You know what we should do, is we should take a quick look at this and try to figure out where our efficiency is the worst, right? Now, the very opening, what are you going to do with it? It's straight. A pinch, yeah, we could make our pinch bigger. We can't make it any wider unless I take metal out of the center divider. This has not had any metal taken out of the center divider. Could we go up? Yeah, we could probably go up quite a bit. We could probably go down quite a bit. Down isn't really going to help us because of our, our manifold interface is so bad. Right, the, the intake port hits it at such a low angle. That probably wouldn't help us. That would probably hurt us more than anything else. But raising, raising it would probably help. The middle of the port's not bad. Even the short side radius. Now, could we improve this? It's a good question. Remember, that's that part of the, that part. The airflow is turning really hard. Right? You need extra area to slow the air down to actually make it around that corner and be efficient. So you'll see that on the uh, the TPIS as well. And our valve job, of course, we could improve, which would make the whole thing better. We're going to move on to the TPIS now. Okay, guys, sorry about all the junk on the page, but kind of got to keep that to myself for now. So what I did is I took our, our intake manifold and I broke it up into five sections, similar to what we did last time, right? A is our very opening. B is where it gets a little bit bigger before... As it starts to turn, right, it gets bigger right there. In fact, the stock design was very big compared to the opening and the uh, middle of the port stock. Now, I took away as little as I could in that area because it was already huge. And the reason they do that is they want to be able to get that air to turn. You have to remember, it is a cross ram design, so it's it's got an S in it, which really knocks your efficiency way down. C is about the center of the port. D is where we start to make our hard turn. And E is our opening, which is at an, on an angle. Okay? So, what do we do? I did my areas. Okay, you can see here we got a different radius. So, I have to do my little calculation to figure out my radius in order to get it relatively close. Everything else is about a half inch radius, half inch burr radius for the corners. Now we take a look at our opening, which is a circle, okay? But it's bigger than our Arizona Speed and Marines by a little bit. I want a little bit of an edge there, and I want it to be able to fit, okay? In order to do that without worrying about how it's assembled, now the guy that's going to assemble this, he's an expert. I don't expect him to have any problems whatsoever. But if I don't do it so it all fits together nice and has overhangs, he wouldn't be happy. So it has to be a hair bigger, just like I do on the interface of the manifold to the head. 
So that's relatively straight. Take a look what happens at this level. Now, we, can, we could get 331.4 CFM through there. Now, I only calculated at 250. 250 is what it flows this whole path. So these are definitely skewed. I didn't just test this manifold by itself. I mean, I did, but it, it wasn't really a fair test because it's it exits at such an angle, it really hampers the flow through it. So what I did is I took our combined flows and I did it by an efficiency. Now, what you could do is take our possible flows, right? It's 270 and divide it by 331. It'll bring it up a little bit. You can do that on all of them. That's up to you guys. Okay, this area has a possibility to flow 421 by area alone, right? It's much bigger, much bigger. And the reason they do that, turn that air. We are down to 59%, ouch, painful, right? Now, I did do an, an experiment where I filled part of that, didn't really make much of a difference. But you have to remember, it's only being flowed at 28 inches, not 120 or 150 like a running engine. Okay, it will react differently. So I'm afraid to just fill that with epoxy and say, oh, we got that efficiency up because I don't think it's going to work. I think it needs to have more area right there in order to let that air turn. You guys can give me your opinion on that in the comments. C, midsection, relatively efficient compared to that turn, right? 69%. It still has a good amount of area. Remember, part of this project was trying to keep these tight and not just blow the whole thing out. That's, that was not the point. So, even at that, that's a very efficient section because it's quite tall. It's an aftermarket piece. So, it's relatively big. You can see our efficiency went up 10% as it straightens out. D is our tight turn towards the end. Okay, that's had a lot of work done to it. At this point, it says it should flow 315. It doesn't even come close to that, I'm sure. I'm sure this, this is really our biggest restriction in the entire setup. Now, I could probably take a little more out of that. Does it pay? I don't know. It says it should flow 315. Remember, that's had the roof raised quite a bit. It's had that turn straightened about as much as I can straighten it without really making that casting thin. And we're relatively efficient compared to the rest of this mess. Okay, and our exit, our exit skewed a little bit because it's an, on an angle, right? So what I basically did is measured the opening and the width, and that's not really our area because it's on an angle. I mean, we can figure that out, but I'm not really in interested in doing any of that. So guys, a bunch of raw info. Is it a waste of time? Maybe. I'm just about ready to to bolt this all up and see what we got. Uh, of course, I'm comparing cylinder head to cylinder head. And uh, whenever I do that, there's like, oh, I could improve this little spot a little bit more. And then I have to do it on all eight ports, of course. And uh, that's going to happen. That's probably two full days worth of changing little things here and there. And then I have to do the same thing on on the lower, which is make, you know, all of these areas the same height and width, basically, right? In a similar shape as I can. So I will go through all of these points and make them as close as I can, which is a huge amount of work and probably a complete waste of time. Can't help it. OCD, guys. Got to work around it best you can. That's one of the reasons it takes me so long to do anything. And this, I feel, is a really important project. I'm really going to... Uh, I'm really putting a lot of effort into it. Well, guys, 14 and a half minutes of absolute nonsense. I appreciate you guys hanging out with me. Have a good night.